Um, moving on, uh, from high school, how do I know how many credit hours each class is worth? Um, Christina volunteered for this one. So yeah, Christina? and Robin, feel free to jump in. I'm just at the, the start of this, but basically if it, you know, if it's something that's going to take a year's worth of work, it's worth a full credit. And if it's something that's about a half year's worth of work, it's a half credit. And at the end of the day, it's your decision again on how, how to award that credit. If you feel like what they did in, you know, you hear thrown around a lot, well, 180 hours is a, is a full credit, but because that's what a public school student would do. But if your student can cover a full year of biology in three months time and you're satisfied that they've learned it to your satisfaction, then they get a full credit for that. Because again, it's your school, you get to decide. Now, one thing with that, like the biology, if you award a credit of biology for a full year and your kid doesn't know enough to like compete with other kids that age, um, they're not going to necessarily believe you. Um, especially like a college type thing, if there's an entrance exam or something like that, you want to make sure that the kid actually knows it. Right. So don't just go awarding credit. Oh, we talked about it. We did a little bit of this and whatever. So I'm giving him an accredited biology. It doesn't work that way. Somebody will catch on if you're doing that. And then they'll start questioning you. So don't do that to your kids. Well, and the big thing is if they get to college and you've given them a credit in biology and they haven't actually learned biology, or if you've given them a credit in algebra and they don't know that math well enough, they're gonna to have to retake it um, mm -hmm. when they get to college. Like they'll placement test them when they get there. So you wanna make sure they know the material, um, obviously, but you don't have to you know, sit down and record that they've worked so many hours to give them a credit. Um, and that, especially in electives, if they do like some big project on something and you wanna give them you know, an art elective in that or a music elective or whatever elective medieval weaponry, um, I'm looking at you, Marcy, um, for, you know, building whatever, you can give them that half credit if you feel like they have done enough work to, to warrant that. I think we've earned a full credit of medieval weaponry. You probably weaponry. have earned like five credits worth of medieval weaponry. This <laughs> <laughs> is all your last year. Um, the, the next question is, does my kid have to take gym class? And what if he feels embarrassed in his short shorts? What do you do? Well, let's start with the short shorts. Be sure to take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Your kid has to do something to show that they're doing exercise in the state of Ohio. Gym class, sure, if you can find one. If not, sports, ice skating, bowling, skiing, snowboarding, biking, swimming. Should I go on and on? You don't have to Whatever. take a gym class. Just do something regular and keep active and wear what you feel comfortable with. And even yeah. as a point of notice in most high schools, in public school, if you play a sport, a varsity sport, you are exempt from the gym credit. You don't have to take it. There you go. Um, number 17. How do we keep our school days from being too long? And is it important that we finish our books by the end of the year? We have Angel and... Um, um, Angie. Okay, you can first, go ahead. Can you take the second one? Sure, go ahead. Um, uh, how do you keep the day from being too long? Well, you stop. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the easy answer. Yep. Um, we talked about, you know, a little bit of, of scheduling earlier. Make yourself, instead of making a schedule for your family, make a routine. So let's say we get up in the morning. We are not morning people, so we're a little grumpy. We need some space. We need a little bit of time to eat breakfast, have like a half hour device time or a TV show. Then we're going to do an hour and a half of schoolwork, approximately. Um, after schoolwork, you have a break. You have lunch. Do chores, back to school work, do a thing, do a thing, do a thing, okay? So you can, um, you know, say we're gonna have supper time and then we're gonna have chore time and then we're gonna have dessert and then we're gonna play a game and then we're gonna go to bed. That's, you're not giving yourself a schedule because you're not saying from 8.45 to 8.53, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna be brushing our, you know, like you don't have to overly schedule your life. You really, really don't. 
Um, but if you give yourselves a routine, you get used to it, you fall into it a little easily, and then you can see where the trouble spots are. You can see, um, my, I know my kids are not ready for learning in the morning because I live with them. I've met them. I've met my children. I know who they are and I know who they aren't and they aren't morning people, okay? The only person in my house who's a morning person is my husband. And he gets up early so he can have time by himself. So I totally understand. So if you know you're not morning people, you don't schedule doctor visits in the morning at like eight o'clock when the, when the office opens. Why would you do that? No. Um, if you know that by uh, two o'clock your kid is screaming because they need nap time, Amy, um, you know, <laughs> it doesn't matter if they're four or if they're 14. If your kid needs a break, let him have a break. And sometimes, you know, I have a bad day. I'm grumpy as crap. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to deal with you people. Sometimes it's hunger. Sometimes it's because I wasn't sleeping that night or the night before. Sometimes it's because something is going on in our lives. Sometimes um, I'm just having a bad day and I can't explain it and I'm mad at everything or I have a headache or whatever. You take a break. Kids have problems like that too. They have nightmares. They don't sleep well. Somebody was snoring last night in the bedroom. Um, you know, maybe they aren't feeling well. Maybe they are hungry, maybe, or hangry. Um, maybe they watched a video about war and they're sensitive and it bothers them and they're just not over it yet because they haven't processed it. You don't know what's going on unless you engage your child about what the problem is. So if you need a break, that's, if your day's too long, stop. Your day's over. That's all. You, freedom in homeschooling. Freedom, freedom, freedom. The one thing that we do in the, when, in the routine is non-negotiable tasks. It's like, you got to brush your teeth. Even if it's the worst day of your life, you still have to brush your teeth. Right. But we, so we, we do that with my housework or the, you know, the chores the kids don't do, but then also with their schoolwork that they're sort like reading. Even if you're having a bad day, you don't have to read what's on my list of books, but you need to read something. If you don't, if you can't, if it's too stressful to do an entire math lesson, half math lesson will work, or we can do some flashcards or something like that. But there's certain things that, that even if it is a bad day, that we need to pick up something, and you can't just you can't just have a bad day for a week and never pick up a math book. Right. Well, and that depends on the age of your child too. I mean, right. if you have a, a six-year-old who's just starting kindergarten or whatever, and they're they're um, reading lesson is really hard and their brain is just taxed and they're tired, you know, give them a bye for the rest of the day. But, mm -hmm. you know, if they're 15 and they just don't want to do the dishes, <laughs> not that I'm telling <laughs> on anyone right now, um, you still have to. Yeah, the get to know your kid. If you want to eat tomorrow, you have to do the dishes today. I, I don't know what else to tell you. Like, this is the answer. Angie, how about finishing books? The textbooks? Simple answer, no. You do not need to finish your book in one year time. Okay, if it's a textbook, <laughs> teachers don't finish the book. <laughs> Sorry, um, they don't even use the whole book. They Some pick and choose and I, I, no. Now, if it's an actual book book and you're having fun, I'm, I'm kind of hoping you're not taking a whole year to read a book book, but if you do, that's okay too. Um, but there's no time limit. So, no. <laughs> I have heard that if uh, you finish, if you're using a textbook and you finish 75% of it, that's considered mm -hmm. finished for the year. Yep. For full yep. credit. And what we do is, if they're not done, like, um, I have my kids read Mystery of History. Um, for history, that is one of the curricula that we do use um, in our family. Because first of all, it's fantastic. And second of all, I'm not going to teach them history because that's a personal choice for me. Unless it's something specific, but again, that's also personal. Um, but if you read, have you ever read the mystery of history, like any of the lessons? Mm -hmm. They are so readable. So. I don't make my kids do all the assignments, they just read it. So if they're not done, that's what they're doing next year. 
or if you just continue, you don't even have to take a break for uh, summer vacation or anything. Right. If you're into something, go for it. I mean, heck, right. we're doing algebra because he's enjoying it. Um, this is a couple of things we're doing over the summer because everything's been busy. Math, sure, go ahead. Go, go do some math. That's, that's why I forgot to add to my free schooling or budget schooling or whatever is that the history curriculum that we're using, I split it in half. It's a, it's a one-year curriculum and I just cut it in half and we did half last year and we're doing half this year. So I get more bang for my buck. We're still doing, we're still doing, I mean, they're in elementary school, so we're not counting credits or anything like that, but it's still a lot of history we covered. It's just split up. Same goes with um, foreign language, especially mm -hmm. if you actually look at what you cover. Spanish one book, you split that thing in half and maybe you start the second book halfway through Spanish two. And that's not because you're not learning it, it, you have to practice. So a lot of it is mastery. And if you're just reading a textbook to read it, you're not mastering the material. Um, let's do the next one. What if my kid simply will not do his schoolwork? Where do I turn? Um, I'll, I'll tell you, take a break. Sometimes it just needs to be happened. Sometimes you need to look at the curriculum. Maybe it's not a good match for your child. Maybe you're not doing a good job teaching it. There's a lot of things you have to take into, into account on this kind of thing. But also, if your child's not doing the schoolwork, sometimes a nice, stern conversation needs to happen, mm -hmm. especially when they're in high school. And when they're in high school, my conversation with my child was, this doesn't hurt me. This hurts you. I've provided everything that you need. I'm available at your disposal during these hours. If you choose not to do it, it's to your detriment, but I have made it all available for you. When they're at that age, they get to make those kinds of decisions. When they're younger, you have to decide what works best for your family. Is it taking away things until they get the idea that this is very important for you to do? But again, I would start with looking at what you're doing and making sure it's a good fit first, or making sure your child is just not having a hard time like with um, reading. They may be pushing back because they need some extra time to learn this particular thing. Not that they're being bad just to be bad, but they're having difficulty and they have no other way to get it out except to say through poor behavior. Um, the next question, how can I foster a love of learning in my kids? Sometimes it's like pulling teeth. Robin? <laughs> okay, love of learning starts with you. If you are learning things all the time, if you are sitting and reading books, if you're looking at interesting videos, they are seeing that you are always learning. That school or that learning doesn't have to equal school is what I guess I'm trying to say. That they see you they will emulate you and that, that will go a long way to helping your child learn to love learning. Second part of that is have interesting things around, games and books and videos and invite them along to great activities. Some things that might be outside of your scope of your lesson for right now, but anything that kind of might spark their interest. You never know what it might be. All righty. Um, the next question, it's kind of long, and I don't remember the name of the person who asked it, um, but I believe her situation was kind of that she was at work all day. She didn't have a chance to watch the videos. Um, and the story she kind of tells goes for a lot of people, I think. Um, it's got a nine-year-old, fourth grade, um, ADD, ADHD, anxiety, has an IEP. Um, during quarantine, as the crisis schooling that everybody got sent home with from school, um, it was frustrating. The curriculum that they sent home, it didn't work. Um, it wasn't the right materials for him, but that's what they had at the time. And we've kind of gone over in some of the videos, and then the teachers tried, they were doing what they could. It was, it was a hard time for everybody. Um, but these packets weren't working. Um, they were spending six hours a day doing six packets. Um, including weekends. Um, he was getting these these worksheets. Um, they, he wanted hands-on. He hates reading. Um, he had failed all the state tests and the district tests. And basically, school just wasn't working for him, probably even before 
um, before the quarantine. Um, and then she comments how he was just taught to pass state tests. Um, with everything going on right now, she, the mom's worried that he won't do well with the transition of going to school with all of the new restrictions. Um, so they were talking about homeschooling last year, um, talking about it again this year, and now they're going to do it. Um, so for kids like, this is, I guess, a two-part question here. Um, for kids like that, with a lot of issues, school's not a good fit. Um, getting started with homeschooling. One of those big things, take a look through, through the videos. Um, we did cover a lot about um, the freedom that comes with homeschooling and how you're able to help your own kids um, and working at their pace, doing what they need, taking a break, take a look at the de-schooling information. Um, that's a huge thing. Um, the, la the next part of this, um, the same mom has a daughter, 13, going into eighth grade. Again, she has issues, ADD, comprehension, focus. Um, she did okay during quarantine. She did okay with the packets. Um, the church teachers were very involved. It worked out great. Um, so mom's not sure if homeschooling is kind of right for her. Um, they haven't figured out what they're going to do yet. Uh, which I know a lot of people are trying to deal with that too. Are you going to deal with go to the school? Are you going to deal with a hybrid? Are you going to do with online? Um, this, she is also a stay-at-home mom uh, with a disability. So there's a whole bunch of different choices that you can make there. Um, and there's a lot to think about. One thing, uh, we're nearly out of time for this, this video. Um, one thing that you can keep in mind is if you make a decision to put even one of your kids in one of the school models and it's not working after they start, it's not working. You can take them out at any time. You can, you can send in a note, uh, your NOI and you can take the kid out anytime. It doesn't matter. Um, so if you're not sure and you think she might want to stay in school and keep trying with that, that's fine. Keep the one kid home. The other one can go to school, and if it's not working, bring them home. It's all right. 